What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. I apologize for this video coming out late today. I'm not going to lie. I've been awake for the better portion of the last 90 hours or so. I've never put in a, a I, I've never fucking grinded like I have over the last four days for this draft guide to come out. And I know I told you guys it was coming out on Monday, but it is officially done. And I'm just waiting on next step directions for my web dev to migrate it to a new host. And then it will be completely live. But, but the product is ready. It is clean. It is pretty. And all you Patreon members, all you draft guide buyers, Everything will be easily organizable. The rankings are up. It's not live yet, all right? It's going to be on bdge.store. But if you go to bdge.store and you see it not look like this, it still looks like the old homepage, do not buy the guide yet, all right? And we've got new dynasty and rookie info in there. We've got the Bible, the startup Bible, the season-long Bible. You already know how that shit goes. Nope, we can't let you see that. And we've got new dashboards for all the rookie. Oh, fuck. It's cool. All right. All right. All right. I'm, I apologize. I'm not trying to really plug this. I can't wait to get the draft guide live for y'all. For those of you guys that already purchased it, don't worry. I will be shifting your email accounts over to the new website. Uh, you might just have to reset your password once you go on there because I can't, I don't see your password. So all I can do is input your email address. So any technical difficulties, try to fucking figure it out yourself before it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I will get about a thousand emails today. So if I get back to you a little bit late, I apologize. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, you will eventually be shifting over to that website. But I, I believe it should be live by like noon-ish today, 1 p.m. Eastern time today. All we're waiting on is the, the site to actually migrate over to a new host. But everything on the site is fucking done. Let's fucking go. So I just wanted to give you a heads up if I look like I'm about to die on camera today. It's because I might actually die on camera today. So somebody call the ambulance. But not for me, motherfuckers. Let's go. We're talking about five more players today that we need to stop drafting ASAP Rocky. All right. We talked about the running back position yesterday. So if you missed that video, that shit popped off. That's got like 35,000 views already. It's August. The engagement's high. The energy is somehow high. I'm 100% dying today. I'm leaving my masterpiece out there for y'all. This is going to be the last video you guys ever see me on. So let's make it a fucking good one. Yesterday, we did five running backs. We need to stop drafting ASAP based on what we've seen in the summer and what we've seen in the preseason. I actually really like this idea of August being all about the preseason games. No, I, I talk so much about player analysis in May, June, July, that when you get to August, it's nice to have refreshing information. It's nice to actually see players on the field. And I know every single time I put out videos that are based on preseason games and preseason snaps and usage, y'all go nuts and you're like, yo, you know, you're going, you're taking this shit way too seriously. It's just preseason. Guys, you have to fucking understand a coach is not running players out with the first stringers if they're not going to be first team players. You don't waste a quarterback's valuable reps in the preseason as the starter with players who are going to be backups. They're showing you how they want to run their team, okay? You, you need to get that through your head. I don't care how a player performs. I just care about what their formations were, how many snaps they're on the field, when the starting quarterback was on the field, who was used on third downs, who was using passing situations. It's very evident. You guys will be like, oh, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't fucking matter, how come Leonard Fournette got two fucking snaps with Tom Brady, Ronald Jones got two snaps with Tom Brady, and then on third downs and passing situations Gio Bernard got the two snaps that Tom Brady had and had two targets if the snaps don't fucking matter why does that line up so intricately with how they're gonna play in the regular season fucking riddle me that all right riddle me that tuck your shirts in stop yelling I'll stop yelling and let's eat <laughs> Okay, so today we're getting to five wide receivers, five pass catchers, actually, because we got a few tight ends on the list that you need to stop drafting ASAP in fantasy football. Number one on this list, and he's a guy I've been telling y'all to fade for a long time already, Miko Hardman. You know what? I've been fucking on point. I'm sorry. I don't know what's got came over me today with the guys that I've been telling you to fade. And then based on week one preseason usage, my takes have just been, I feel like, I feel like I'm a fucking bow and arrow artist. That's had way too much Adderall, you know, like the laser focus is borderline suicidal, you know, I don't even know what that fucking means, but I know what it means for me, Hardman, that he's not the wide receiver two on the chiefs. Okay. 
They've been telling us, oh, he's a wide receiver too. No one actually told us that. You know what told us that? A depth chart that that surfaced out into the open that some intern, some coffee boy probably made from the Kansas City Chiefs front office. I'll, I'll preface this by saying wildly small, wildly small sample size. But Patrick Mahomes played in their first preseason game. Four snaps. Tyreek Hill played all four. Demarcus Robinson played four. Mikael Hardman played two. And when they were in two wide receiver sets, guess which one of those three was off the field? You can do the math. Mikael Hardman was not on the field in three wide receivers or in two wide receiver sets. When they played three wide receiver sets, he got on the field. He moved into the slot. I'm telling you, they're telling you who's going to be starting in two wide receiver sets. It's Demarcus Robinson, not Mikael Hardman. He didn't look good either. He's bobbling passes. He's dropping passes. He's just such an easy pass himself in fantasy po- in fantasy football draft. Y'all keep ma- making up this uh, this hypothetical this hypothetical upside literally just because he's fast. The problem with having upside when you're Mikael Hardman or arguing for him having upside is that you actually have to be good at football in order to uh in order to have upside so that that's that's the problem Michael Hardman he's not starting in two wide receiver sets okay and again I know this is one preseason game and you're right we shouldn't go all in on this information but when we see it happen in week two I will either readjust to new information or if it happens again then we are cementing the idea of Travis Etienne splitting times with James with James Robinson these running backs that I talked about yesterday Miles Gaskin sharing time with Malcolm Brown, Miko Hardman being the wide receiver three. If it happens again in week two, if it happens again in week three with the starters, then they're telling you what formations are going to be running in the regular season and what kind of personnel we're going to be seeing moving around the field. So Miko Hardman, stop drafting him, please. The Jacksonville Jaguars receiving group, man. So Trevor Lawrence played 15 snaps in their first preseason game. DJ Chark still recovering from the hand injury. He did not play whatsoever. Okay, then you have Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chanel. Those are the two guys we're focusing on for fantasy football. And here's what I'll say about this. Uh, Chanel and in the draft guide, right in the draft guide, we have our official all fade list. And prior to even seeing week one preseason, DJ Shark and LaVisca Chanel were both on that list. Okay, there's a handful of guys that I put on there that I won't be touching in drafts this year. Both of them were on this list. I will say LaVisca Chanel looked very good, right? Just from a raw watching football standpoint. Look good. They were getting him involved. Screen passes down the field. But my big worry was what happens when they, like Miko Hardman, move to 12 personnel, when they move to two wide receiver sets, okay? And only two wide receivers are on the field. There is no slot receiver. LaVisca Chenault became a part-time receiver. Trevor Lawrence played on 15 snaps. LaVisca Chenault played on eight of them. Whenever they went into two wide receiver sets, LaVisca Chenault came off the field. It was Colin Johnson and and Marvin Jones. So the fact that DJ Chark, who is expected to be one of the starting outside wide receivers, wasn't even playing and LaVisca still couldn't get the reps as an outside wide receiver is extremely worrisome. Because when DJ Chark comes back, that's almost no path to playing outside wide receiver for for LaVisca Chenault. Colin Johnson, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about DJ Chark altogether. I'm worried about DJ Chark altogether. What happens if it's Marvin Jones and Colin Johnson and DJ Chark's just the, the fourth wide receiver in terms of role and snaps and stuff? I know he's recovering from the hand injury. It's a rookie quarterback. They need to gain a little bit of rapport. I'm extremely worried about both guys. Marvin Jones looked by far and away like the best wide receiver in that group right now. He looks like he's going to be the best fantasy wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has been the best value all offseason. It's no secret. I think everybody in the fantasy community has kind of like been together on that same take. But now it's, I don't even know if he's the best value play any, anymore as much as he just might straight up be the best fantasy player in that wide receiver group. So I haven't been drafting Chanel or DJ Chark, but I really highly advise you guys step bike from taking them and and get shares of other wide receivers going in that range. Let's move over to some of the tight ends. Dallas Goddard, Philadelphia Eagles. You guys are going to be like, why is he on this list? Did you see that big play he made? Yeah, he made a great play. And Dallas Goddard's going to make great plays this year. My concern, as I've said 50 times in the last two weeks, is that as Zach Ertz is still there, Zach Ertz is still going to be there, okay? There were 12 snaps played by the first-team offense and Jalen Hurts. Zach Ertz out-snapped Dallas Goddard 7-5, to five, all right? Both guys ran five pass routes. He was out-targeted, had a bigger target share, all that shit, okay? As long as Zach Ertz is there, Dallas Goddard, He's going to be annoying as shit. Dallas Goddard needs to be looked at as a guy that doesn't have the ceiling that we think he does. The ceiling of his talent will not match the ceiling of his opportunity. Next year, Dallas Goddard, we're all in. Fine. And we've been saying that for three fucking years already. But as long as Zach Ertz is there, he's going to get targets. He's going to steal red zone looks. And Dallas Goddard's ceiling is capped. And we're seeing it in the first team runs. 
Mike Kosicki. Uh, I'm not I'm not going nuts about this. Mike Kosicki was using rotation with Adam Sheehan and Durham Smythe today and ran a route on only 36 of Tua's dropbacks. Kosicki posted a 70% route rate last season. Worth monitoring. Kosicki was coming off the COVID list, so he might just not be at the full workload. But the Dolphins used Kosicki in the same way last season, where he played on third downs and possibly on second and long. Uh, but he, it looks like he might be in a timeshare. I think they really like Adam Sheen. All right, we'll see what happens in the next preseason game when Tua plays more snaps and uh, and we get a better look at the snap rate by the tight ends and, and with the first team and whatever. Uh, but Gasicki was a guy I wasn't targeting to begin with. I don't think he's that good of a football player to begin with. And they brought in like four more extra targets in, in Waddle and Will Fuller for Tua to throw to. So I'm probably out on Mike Gasicki, and this was not a good start. Last on this list is Adam Troutman. He was already on my fade list. The hype had gotten out of control. If he does break out in his NFL career, we are I am super, super confident that we're a year early on that breakout, okay? He did next to nothing last year. He had like 100 and I think it was 179 receiving yards. And I, I dug into the archives as I do. I like to bring out the big facts for y'all. Just want y'all to tuck your shirt in for this because we're going to run through some numbers here. And uh, and while you're chilling, if you're enjoying the video, you know, and you want more videos like this, I would I would love for you to subscribe to my channel so you could fucking hang out with me on the daily. We're putting out fantasy videos like this every single day where we're telling you to fade players and we're telling you to draft players and we're telling you to drink margar margaritas, all that, all that good shit. All right. So uh, hit the subscribe button down there. Hit the thumbs up. And we will jump into this big fact from Adam Troutman. Of 168 tight ends since the year 2000 that were rookies. So since 2000, there have been 168 tight ends that have had fewer than 200 receiving yards in their rookie year. So we're looking at 168 of them with fewer than 200 receiving yards in their rookie year. So that's the majority of them, right? Of those 168 rookie tight ends, 95% of them finished with fewer than 400 receiving yards in year two. 92% of them scored fewer than four touchdowns in year two. 95% of them caught fewer than 40 passes in year two. So unless Adam Troutman is going to be in the 99th of the 99th percentile, his stat line is going to be worse than 40 for 404. He's probably, I mean, that's reasonable. Most times we don't see tight ends that are this young. Yes, you'll see guys like Darren Waller, Robert Tunyon. They're older. They're, they're like 26, 27, 28. They've been in the league for a while. They don't have to worry about play time or blocking because they know different schemes and they know how to play the position. Troutman is a receiving tight end from Dayton. Do you think he got NFL schooling? Do you think he got NFL practice quality type shit at Dayton? No. OK, that's probably why it's going to take him a little bit longer to progress. A player like him who's super young doesn't go from 150 receiving yards to 680 receiving yards. And that's what we need for Adam Troutman to be usable in fantasy and for him to return value at where people are drafting him at like tight end 10, 11, 12, 13. I've heard podcasts that are like talking about him getting into the Tyler Higby Noah Fant range. I'm like, that's just fucking ludicrous. OK, so of those 168 tight ends I mentioned before, again, like 95 percent of them don't top 400 yards, 40 catches, or four receiving touchdowns. The highest year two totals among those 168 rookie tight ends, if you're taking the highest stat from each of those categories, 676 receiving yards, 55 receptions, six touchdowns. People are acting like those are Troutman's floors. Again, those were literally the best numbers of all time of rookie tight ends that had two or fewer than 200 receiving yards in their rookie year, which Troutman did. All right? That's what I got, y'all's. That I'm tripping over my words today. It's early. I've been up since like fucking 5.30. To sleep at 2 a.m. last night. Woo! Woo! All right. All right. I'm feeling good, though. No complaining. We're in the midst of, of summer. of in the midst of August. Uh, it's my favorite fucking time of the year. Life is good. I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to everybody that's new to the channel, that's subscribing. Thank you for everybody that's been around uh, for a minute, man. This this time of the year makes me really, really, really appreciative of, of all the support that you guys have given to not only me, but the brand and, you know, supporting me through different things that you purchase, whether it's a membership on the site or a draft guide or simply dropping a comment down below and just being like, thanks for the fucking video. It really does warm my heart as much of a fucking prick as I come off as. I really, 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 really like owe everything to y'all. Um, this is my livelihood. I do this fucking 24 seven. I live, eat, breathe, making content for you guys. So it's, it's, uh, it's very, very, very appreciative anytime you guys give any sort of simple support, man. So um, I love y'all. 
I hope to see you bite tomorrow. And the easiest way to do so is by subscribing to the channel. I'm not sure what we got in store for tomorrow's video, but Friday will be uh, Fade the Public. We're going over our league meeting. So we had our high stakes high school league that we've been in for 13 years. We sat down and had our league meeting last weekend. So we filmed that. Obviously, we'll upload that to the channel and we're going to do a little bit of uh, some some fantasy talk beforehand. But tomorrow we'll have another fantasy video for you, as always, every single day in August, usually 5 a.m. Eastern time. If I'm not up till 3 a.m. working on other projects. All right. I love y'all. I'm out. Bye.